The final round of interviews are set for this week for the Denver Broncos as they look to name their next head coach of their franchise. Plus, we take a look at free agency. Yes, it'll be here quicker than you know it. We're taking a look at the offensive line and running backs on roster that are set to become unrestricted free agents in 2023. You get that and much more from the South Stands to the end zone. You are locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Show me the money. That is the sweepstakes this week for the Denver Broncos as they look to hire their next head coach under the Walton Penner Family Ownership Group. The final round of interviews are set for the initial process of the head coaching search. Welcome into a brand new episode, Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter for Mile High Sports, joined alongside, as always, by my co-host and good friend, Sarah Bettinger, site expert, predominantly orange. Dot com. And as we've talked about on yesterday's episode of the show, Sean Payton obviously set to interview on Tuesday for the Broncos head coaching job alongside Raheem Morris. Two interviews in one day. The final round of interviews will happen this week, and then we'll see if the Broncos have made up their mind or if they're going to proceed forward with maybe round two of interviews. A lot to ponder here, and also we're going to break down free agency, which is coming up quicker than most people realize. Exactly. Two months, and it will fly, folks. I promise you that. We have you covered here locked on Broncos. Sarah, my friend, Hey, busy, busy week this week here for everybody in Broncos country. Busy week in Broncos country, Cody. As you said, the team going to be flying out to Los Angeles to interview Sean Payton Tuesday morning, then interviewing Raheem Morris, the defensive coordinator of the Rams after that. But there's more interviews throughout this week that we got to be aware of. Just we know what the Broncos have on the docket, right? Thursday, the team is going to be talking to D'Amico Ryans, whose team is getting ready to advance in the playoffs here, obviously, and Dan Quinn as well. As of the time that we're recording this, we don't know whether Dan Quinn's team will be advancing in the postseason. But you know what? I think either way that interview is going to happen. We'll see. And we know that he his name has been thrown around a ton, Cody. And I feel like to the point that like his name gets kind of mixed in. But it does, doesn't it feel to you? Maybe, and maybe it's just me, but it feels to me like Dan Quinn has kind of been like simultaneously in the mix this whole time, but also sort of an afterthought, right? Like it's not like he's, it, it's not like he's necessarily everybody's favorite candidate. It's not like he's necessarily, you know, the, we don't know if he's the actual favorite. It feels like the Broncos prefer other names. It kind of feels like he's more of like the fallback option, but kind of like the most popular fallback option. How do you kind of perceive Dan Quinn, I guess? I, I, it's kind of an interesting situation with him because I don't know what to really think. Is he truly in their top tier of candidates that they want, or is he simply in the mix? Is he a fallback option? I don't know what he is. I don't know what to make of Dan Quinn, but he's getting the final interview this week. And as we know, I mean, right now, Denver's the only team that has submitted a request to interview him and actually has an interview lined up with him. You know, for me, we all know he was a finalist in the head coaching search. I believe it was obviously Nathaniel Hackett, Kevin O'Connell, and Dan Quinn. Ultimately, Denver went with Nathaniel Hackett, which, you know, it, it, I, I feel like in this perspective here, Sarah, when we saw the Broncos go with Nathaniel Hackett last year, look, we were we were excited about the move, right? And, you know, getting to know Nathaniel Hackett, I, I, I like the guy a lot. I wish him the best. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out for a first-year head coach. Now, for Dan Quinn, it's like, all right, well, if, if he was the third finalist in last year's job search, how can he become the favorite in this search that features names like the Jim Caldwell, Sean Payton, Jim Harbaugh? You know, I, I I don't understand where that's come from. Not to mention, they haven't even interviewed him yet. So it's like, how can he be the favor for the job when he hasn't even interviewed? There are a lot of things that we're seeing, you know, through the grapevines. We're seeing, you know, various reports on social media. Obviously, Dan Quinn is a very well-respected coach, and the Broncos got to see him a little bit up close and personal. I got to see him at training camp when the Dallas Cowboys came to town for joint practices. But the reality of the situation is, is Denver – I, I hope they don't have a favorite right now, right, internally, right? I, I hope that for them, like, okay, you know what? Let's go through all these interviews. Then let's determine who we really, really want and then make the push. I think that's the smart way to do it because if you go into an interview saying, okay, hey, this guy's our favorite, you know, it could lead to what we call, you know, a lot of times you go into something and, and maybe it's skewed a little bit. Maybe, you know, the game is kind of rigged if you have favoritism towards one candidate when you're going into an interview. I don't believe, considering the business acumen that, that 
uh, Greg Penner has, I don't believe necessarily that he's going to go into something and say, okay, hey, this is the favorite right here. No, he's a businessman. He's going to conduct everything thoroughly. They're going to do extensive background on each candidate. And ultimately, they're going to combine the operation side of things with the football side of things. And that's where George Payton, who so many Broncos fans, and I really want to put a kebab on this, so many Broncos fans believe that George Payton really has no role now with this team. And I can tell you with 110% certainty, that is false. George Payton has a lot of power. He has a lot of influence. And I think so many people are reading into the fact that Greg Penner said in the press conference after they fired Nathaniel Hackett, the next head coach will report directly to me. You touched on this perfectly. This is standard practice in the National Football League as it stands today. The only reason it didn't happen with Denver prior, because they didn't have ownership set in place. So I think that we have to put perspective on that. George Payton would not be on this team. He would not be the general manager if he did not have any power or influence. And Greg Penner also said he's going to rely heavily, heavily on George Payton and his football experience. Well, I think that's big to remember as well. It's 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 a big factor in this. Dan Quinn, obviously, with his relationship with George Payton, that could play a factor. And we also, last week, remember, we had all these interviews we thought were lined up. We had all these candidates we thought were lined up. And then the Broncos kind of sprung a couple of surprise interviews in. I'm not saying they're going to do that again this week, but I mean, hey, would it be the most surprising thing if they added a couple names? There are still some coaches out there that, I mean, the Broncos could interview, they could reach out to, they could talk to, but they haven't yet. There's still no in-person interview yet with Jim Harbaugh, at least as far as we know, Cody, although he was the first official interview of this cycle for the Broncos. He did that uh, digitally. He did that over Zoom or whatever they used. So kind of fascinating to find out what they have up their sleeve this week. The search has been comprehensive. Obviously, it looks like Wednesday is kind of an open day, maybe just after travel and things like that. Maybe they'll be exhausted. Who knows? Or maybe they'll just want to kind of recoup after the trip to Los Angeles. Whatever the case may be, as of right now, I, I think that things are trending. Go back and listen. If you're listening to this show for the first time this week today, go back and listen to yesterday's episode about Sean Payton. It feels at this point in time like things are really trending his direction be very fascinating to see how things feel or what the reporters are saying after the interview on Tuesday. Yeah, and I, I think that's going to be really I, – I think everything that's going to come out of Tuesday, right? You know, obviously that's today. Everything that comes out of some of these interviews, the little nuggets, the sprinkles, or as you like to call them, breadcrumbs, I think it's going to be very interesting to see what we get of that. I know it's going to be a hotly reported on subject for the national media. And, of course, whatever comes out – You'll get reaction on today's episode, Locked on Broncos, and more. Every single day we have you covered on podcast format and your favorite audio podcasting providers. Or if you watch us on YouTube, do us a favor, hit that like button down below if you're watching on YouTube. And make sure you comment with other Broncos members as well in the chat. If you're listening to your favorite audio podcasting platform, make sure you tweet us your thoughts at Cody Rourke NFL, at Sarah Bettinger, at Locked on Broncos. But Broncos country, free agency is fast approaching. And one thing is for certain, the Broncos have a lot of tough decisions to make not only in-house, but also on the outside factor of it. We're going to take a look at some of the in-house, unrestricted free agents that Denver has specifically on the offensive line. You get that on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. This episode of the show is brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks, and Prize Picks is daily fantasy sports done right. And with the Prize Picks app, you choose two to five players that you're focused on heading into the week. These players, they'll have a projection that's set by Prize Picks, and you simply choose whether or not they will have more or less than their prize picks projection, which could allow you to win 10 times your money on any entry. There's no competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Download the prize picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code Locked on. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Prize Picks will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code Locked On at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Taking a look at the offensive line here for this Broncos football team going into free agency. We're taking a look at unrestricted free agents. Denver has 17 UFAs in totality coming up when the new league year begins on March. 15th free agency frenzy is fast approaching. That's one thing that we'll be having our eyes on outside of the Broncos head coaching search here on Lockdown Broncos. Just want to say thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. 
Sarah, let's take a look at the offensive line when we take a look at guys who are unrestricted free agents that are on this roster. I mean, Denver, they have a lot, and specifically at offensive tackle, they have four offensive linemen who played at that position that are set to become unrestricted free agents, which if you look at the writing on the wall, you take away those four guys and you look at where Denver's at, it's kind of dire straits when you take a look at the overall grand scheme of things at tackle, specifically right tackle and depth behind Garrett Bowles, who's coming off of a leg injury. Right. That's the starters for this past season, the past couple seasons, right? Guys who have played a lot. And just the fact that you mentioned it, Cody, four guys that have played significant time for the Broncos at tackle kind of speaks to their situation at that position on both sides of the line, doesn't it? I mean, their injuries, uh, lack of avail availability, excuse me. Billy Turner leads the pack, though, I think in terms of ability i think that he is the best player that the broncos have as a pending unrestricted free agent but he's somebody that again you got to be able to rely on these guys to stay healthy for a consistent period of time he came to denver remember he came to denver with that knee injury that he was recovering from never really quite i, I don't think got to 100 percent. or if he did it was super late in the season cody and maybe you can speak better to that being in the locker room but billy turner is I think the best, I, and then the most available was really Cam Fleming, right? The guy, the 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 guy that kind of everybody loved to bag on. At least me. Remember the 2021 season? I'm sitting here wondering every week why is Cam Fleming even on the roster? He's wasting a roster spot out there. The Broncos kept him for no good reason. Well, he's kind of played the most I think of any right tackle or offensive lineman, even maybe the last couple seasons. He's played a lot of football for the Broncos with two different coaching staffs. So. Very interesting to see. There's also a couple of other names, Cody, at that offensive tackle position. It'd be fascinating to find out where do the Broncos stand with these guys of whether they're going to actually bring them back. Well, I'll, I'll speak to your point on Billy Turner. You know, Billy coming into training camp, he had to have knee surgery, right? And so that impacted him. They, you know, they tried to get him up to speed. You know, unfortunately, you know, for a guy who is, you know, he's a veteran, he's getting older in the NFL. They wanted to be smart with how they approached him, especially coming off a of knee surgery where stability was a thing. You want to build strength back up in the knee, the ligament structure and things like that. You know, when, when Billy Turner got healthy, you know, I, I thought he was playing really, really well. And when he was healthy, he played well for Denver. And then I think it was the, if I'm not mistaken, Mistaken, it was the Carolina or the Tennessee game he got rolled up on, suffered the knee injury, and was placed on injured reserve. I think it was a shock to all of us that we saw him come back off of injured reserve and, and play the final couple of games there for Denver. But he also dealt with a little bit of a back injury. For me, I think for Billy Turner, unless Denver has a real solidified plan, I, and we've taken a look at free agents from other teams that are set to become available here, the only way I could see the Broncos getting a really good right tackle is if they trade for a guy. Because to be honest with you, if, if an offensive tackle is hitting free agency, there's something wrong if the team is not bringing that guy back, right? And I think we all got learned, you know, we all got burnt in the sense from looking at the whole Juwan James situation in hindsight. There was a reason the Miami Dolphins let him go. Denver found out, unfortunately, and he has hardly played seldom since the injury, not to mention the Achilles he suffered, and then he suffered another one when he was with the Baltimore Ravens, and so on and so forth. The list goes on and on. Billy Turner, in my opinion, is a guy you bring back on a one-year deal. He's going to be fully healthy coming into training camp, which I think is great news. And I think if you really want to develop and you know draft a guy behind him and have him sit and learn from a guy like Billy Turner, I think that's probably the best move. Will the Broncos have a first round draft pick? And if they do, will they, you know, spend a first round draft pick on an offensive tackle? At this point in time, I mean, I think it's very unknown whether or not they will do that. And then the next pick that they have will be in round three. But I, so much to consider here with that. You know, on top of that, you mentioned guys like Cam Fleming. You know, I think he's he's very inconsistent in pass protection, which is a question considering Russell Wilson is one of the most sacked quarterbacks in the NFL this year. He is a solid run blocker, though. I have to give him that. I don't know if Denver looks at bringing him back, but one guy I think that they should look at bringing back, I think it's Calvin Anderson. Now, look, Calvin Anderson came into the team in 2019 and was on the active roster for Mike Munchak, even though he didn't start or really hardly get any playing time in 2019. And then he proved that he could be reliable, whether it be a right tackle, whether it be being called up to play left tackle in short moments. Almost an hour before kickoff, you find out Garrett Bowles against the Panthers a couple years ago in the Drew Locke three-touchdown game. All of a sudden, it's like, hey, he's got food poisoning. He can't go. You have to play left tackle today. And he did a really damn good job against Brian Burns. So I think that Calvin Anderson, 
He, he's been a developmental guy, and I think he has value to this team still. And I think he's a great guy to have, especially like here's the worst case scenario. He doesn't start for you. He is great depth to have at that position, which as we've seen this year is important for the Broncos. And then there's a couple guys as well. Obviously the hometown kid, Dalton Riser, set to become an unrestricted free agent. And, you know, you also have Tom Compton who, I mean, realistically, I mean, let's let's be honest here probably going to retire. I don't think he's going to come back in the NFL this year. Uh, he suffered the back injury, suffered another one, you know, once he came back and had to step in at guard after Dalton Reisner and Quinn Miners got hurt against the Cardinals a few weeks ago. So, you know, Compton won't spend too much time on here, but Dalton Reisner, the hometown kid, set to become an unrestricted free agent. Do the Broncos look at bringing him back? What would you do if you were George Payton, Sarah? Well, I think Dalton Reisner kind of gave us clues himself when he did his end of season press conference and, you know, he was being talked up as didn't he win the Darren Williams good guy yeah. award, Cody? He was named he, the, the media loves him, obviously. I think I he's well liked by and he's worthy of that distinction. I mean, he is a good dude, like just the fact over the past couple years, like he's appeared on a, a number of podcasts that we listen to some of our friends in the Broncos media you know, world. And, and he just, he, he'll jump on their podcasts or he'll go to, it goes to events. He goes and visits kids. You know, he does all these different things. He has the Reisner up foundation, all these different things. He is a good guy. I do think though, in terms of the football side of things, it's time for both sides to kind of move on, right? He's been the Broncos starting left guard the last four years. They drafted him, you know, the whole story about him running up to John Elway at the 2019 senior bowl and all those different things. We've had the honeymoon phase of it, and I think you could tell from Reisner's just the way that he was talking at the press conference, you could kind of tell, like, the honeymoon phase is over. I think it's time. You know, he wants to be valued by another team. I don't think the Broncos are going to overpay to necessarily keep him, and I think that that's going to ultimately lead to him being one of the starters on the offensive side of the ball that does depart in free agency. I'm readying myself for that, Cody. I don't know what the Broncos' alternatives will be, but typically, like you mentioned, you don't often see good tackles come available in free agency. There's a decent chance you might see some good guards become available in free agency just by the nature of the how much those guys do get paid. So I think Reisner will head out this offseason. I think the Broncos will look to replace him with somebody new. Well, according to our friends at SpotTrack, his estimated market value is a four-year, $38.2 million deal, which would equate to a $9.5 million average annual salary. I don't know if Denver is going to pay that if that is in case. And I think some of the players are uh, comparing him to is obviously uh, Vitae. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his first name. I will butcher it. Alex Kappa, Gabe Jackson, and Matt Feiler. Uh, so, I mean, I, I, I guess it kind of makes sense when you look at it and considering where their age is at. But I think that... We can also touch on the fact, I think, for Dalton Reisner, this is an offensive scheme for anybody. It, did, it just, for some reason, every single year for the last three years, the offense got worse and worse and worse. And scheme can also impact that. And, and I think that Dalton Reisner was a product of that. I think that, you know, players who struggled next to him, I think Lloyd Cushenberry struggles, it definitely impacted him as well. But, you know, for the Broncos, they have to make a wise decision. And if that's to move on from Dalton Reisner, then that's what probably what they're going to do. If it's to bring him back, I don't think it'll be at $9.5 million per year. I just don't think that's in the cards for the Broncos. I will say, Reisner has always been a good guy, has always spoken to us after games, even when it's... You know, the, the locker room is dead quiet. He's always been the one who stood in front of the media and has talked. And <laughs> funny thing, I you know, at the end of the year, cleaning out the lockers, I went up to him and said, hey, thanks for everything. We're, you know, who knows what the future will hold, but appreciate how professional you were with all of us this year. Shook his hand. He's like, man, you got to get more tattoos. He's like, you get the other sleeve going on because obviously I have this one. And he's telling me to get more tattoos. And I was like, I don't know if fiance would be happy with me doing that and spending money on that. <laughs> but it's something I do want to do. So obviously wishing Dalton Reisner the best regardless of what happens, whether he stays in Denver or whether he decides to test waters elsewhere. But those are the key free agents on the Broncos offensive line who are unrestricted. Going to the 2023 NFL League year, NFL free agency begins on March 15th. We'll have you covered every step of the way with all the rum rumors, rumblings, and news you get to hear locked on Broncos. But what about the running back position with Javante Williams' injury creating a lot of questions about 2023? What about the Broncos and an unsung hero who really stepped up in 2022? You get that on today's episode, Locked On Broncos. This episode of the show is brought to you by our friends at BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from pro football to college bowl season to basketball and the World Cup. 
We've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and the easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, where the game starts. Latavius Murray was an unsung hero of the Broncos 2022 season from a leadership standpoint and from a production standpoint and from a positional standpoint. He stepped up to the occasion in a big way for Denver. He's set to become an unrestricted free agent, but is a return in the cards for the Broncos. Thank you so much, Broncos country, for tuning in, making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. We have you covered every single day in audio format on your favorite audio podcasting platforms for free, or you can also catch us on YouTube as well if you want to watch us and watch the show. Sarah, this is an interesting one, right? And I think everything is going to be premised off of what do the Broncos do with Javante Williams' injury? Now, I'm seeing a lot of takes out there from people saying, oh, Javante Williams' career might be up. Let's stop with that. If that was a a concern that people had, that medical experts had, this was something that would be reported on. This is something that would be addressed. And I think people are creating a lot of crazy narratives around Javante. Here's the reality of the situation, and here's how the Broncos should approach it. Javante Williams should not come back onto the field until he is fully ready physically and not to mention mentally. He shouldn't have to rush his way back to be ready to play. And I think that if the Broncos bring back a guy like Latavius Murray, who is an unrestricted free agent, I think it takes pressure off of Javante to have to do that. Javante doesn't have to prove anything to anybody. We all know how special of a running back and how talented he truly is. Latavius Murray, in my opinion, should be back with the Broncos because he was a valuable asset to them last season. Absolutely. And he became kind of a, you know, consistent force in the running game down the stretch. He just got better and better as the season went along. A couple hundred yard games from him, you know, touchdowns in the red zone, which is something the Broncos really struggled with early in the year. I was looking it up the other day, Cody. Remember early on in the season, they were 32nd. They were dead last in red zone offense. They finished in the top 15. And I think that, you know, Latavius Murray does deserve some credit for that, some kudos for helping them turn that around because he did convert a number of times in the red zone. He helped them convert some third downs in the red zone to be able to convert touchdowns later on. So to me, he is a guy that you definitely bring back. He's available, which is very difficult to come by at the running back position. He's been consistently available throughout his career. Even if there's a game or two here or there, I think he's the type of guy that you can rely on week in, week out. Is he the most dynamic No, that's not the case, but we did see some serious giddy up from him late in the season. I mean, he did show some good explosiveness. I don't think he's a bad athlete at this point by any means. Doesn't look like he's running out there, you know, with cement in his cleats or anything like that. He looks fresh. He looks explosive. So I would bring him back. Absolutely. The other guy that I'm kind of considering, or maybe there's two guys that we can kind of debate between because They'll both do somewhat similar things for you, although one maybe offers more value on special teams. Marlon Mack and Mike Boone, both guys unrestricted free agents for the Broncos. I think we've kind of seen in, you know, brief spurts, I guess we could call it, the best of what both of these guys bring to the table. Mike Boone, you you remember the game from 2021 against Kansas City. You obviously remember a couple of times where he had some big runs here in 2022 season. And then Marlon Mack had the big 70 yard or whatever it was catch and run for the Broncos against the Kansas City Chiefs. And all of a sudden we're like, holy cow, like, is this 2017 or where are we? This is Marlon Mack, like vintage style here. I don't know. I don't know where to go between these two guys, because I think more recently we saw what Marlon Mack brings to the table. But we also know that, man, Mike Boone, he can bring you some good things on special teams when he's available. Unfortunately, he's missed 17 games over the last two years. So where does that leave the Broncos in terms of bringing one or either of these guys back? Well, in my opinion, I think we look at Javante's injury, right? And we're like, okay, you know, that's not good. Denver needs to do whatever they can to get him ready. But I also think, like, when you look at availability and you look at options out there, I mean, I think Denver's got plenty to choose from. Now, keep in mind, they did sign Tyreek McAllister to a futures contract, which guarantees he'll probably be on the 90-man roster initially going into next season. Um, I, there's also a guy, Tyler Beatty, who we saw, obviously, from Mizzou. He had that touchdown catch and run from Russell Wilson in the season finale against the Los Angeles Chargers. He's got some explosive, some spring to him. Uh, Marlon Mack is a guy that also demonstrated that, as you mentioned. Unfortunately for him, he got hurt on the opening kickoff against the Kansas City Chiefs a couple of weeks ago with a hamstring injury. And so for a guy like Marlon Mack, as we know, injuries have kind of been the thing that you allude to. When you look at also Mike Boone as well, I mean, Mike Boone, as we've seen, can be an explosive runner. He can also help you out of the backfield as a pass catcher. 
Um, but then you, you the, the dynamic of him being able to be one of those guys who's the gunner, who's on the outside, who's going to run down full speed. You run into issues where injuries can happen. Obviously, for him, the biggest thing for him this season was his ankle. You know, he had the ankle injury, and then he got he rolled it again. It was kind of a little bit of a setback for him. I like what Mike Boone can add offensively and also the special teams. I'm not opposed there. Look, like let's say you bring back these three running backs on a one-year deal. It's not going to hurt you. It's not going to cost you much. And obviously, if they don't make the roster and you know through training camp, when you cut down from ninety to fifty-three, it, it's not going to hurt you financially to do that. So, I think that's something you have to consider here for the Broncos. So, you know, for me, I'm a big fan of bringing back a guy like Marlon Mack. I want to see what he can do. But there's also guys. There's going to be competition at running back. And as we saw in training camp, Denver had a lot of tailbacks in the backfield competing for a spot and in the preseason. And I think they're probably going to see five or six backs once again on the roster once we go into that same exact portion this upcoming year. And I think we'll see them add in the draft as well, right? You've got to go to the draft for late round picks at least. We saw Tyler Algier, who I think you and I had in one of our mock drafts last yes, year did. out of BYU. He ran for a thousand yards for the Atlanta Falcons this year, not to pat ourselves on the back because, you know, we don't get everything right around here, no. but I think that was a pretty good call at the time that he would be a good NFL back and a nice potential compliment to Javante Williams. So we'll continue to keep our eyes peeled for NFL draft prospects as we get closer to that time as well. I do think as you as you mentioned, Tyler Beatty, easy to forget that he's on the roster. Also, Chase Edmonds still under contract as of right now. We'll see what happens with his deal because he counts a pretty significant chunk against the salary cap. We'll see if the Broncos either let him go or try to redo that deal or whatever they end up doing with that. But, man, I think there are options. I think there's plenty for the Broncos to look to to give Javante that time to just kind of say, okay, they're going to be okay. Until I'm 100%, I don't have to rush back because that's going to be key. Everybody's going to want to see Javante out there week one in September or whatever the date of the season opening game is. They're going to want to see 33 behind Russell Wilson or next to Russell Wilson. And I think that right now we can't hedge our bets on that happening. I, don't, I would say don't plan on it. If it ends up happening, be grateful. Don't plan on it right now. The Broncos have to make sure their running back group is going to be good in 2023 without number 33. And not to say that he's not going to play, but you just never know coming back yeah. from knee injury. We saw that with KJ Hamler last year, and we said the same thing about wide receiver. You've got to make contingency plans at running back. And I don't think that the organization is going to rush Javante to be ready. Like They want him to take his time. They want him to be comfortable. They believe in him short-term, and they also believe in him long-term as well. So I think those things are important to consider if you are a Broncos fan. But Broncos country, let us know on the unrestricted free agent sides on the offensive line and running back, who do you think the Broncos should prioritize in bringing back this season at offensive line, whether it be tackle or guard or running back in-house free agents? Denver has 17 of them that will be unrestricted. Restricted. We'll continue to take a look at unrestricted free agents on tomorrow's episode of Lockdown Broncos. Plus, we'll update you with the latest in the Broncos head coaching search. You get that here every single day on Lockdown Broncos. You can get this podcast free and available everywhere you get your podcast in audio format. Or you can watch us on YouTube, on your smartphone. You can watch us on your computer. Or if you have a smart TV that has YouTube, you can pull us up and watch us on your TV. Make sure you always get involved in the conversation in the YouTube comment section with other members of Broncos country. Thank you so much for tuning in making us your first listen of the day. Sarah and I will be back tomorrow for a brand new episode of the show.